ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mac and T Show Podcast. Here are your hosts, Ryan McKay and T. David. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top. We're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show. Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. T, um, it's going to be an interesting show today. It could be short, it could be long. It's going to depend on a few things. First of all, we're going to get into a little NBA playoff talk, and we'll finish it, finish up the show with the Avengers. But sandwiched in between that, we're going to bring back chanting and ranting. Yes, praising and. Uh, yeah, like we had discussed before we came on, I'm going to do mine first because the next hour and a half, two hours is going to be tease, ranting, and chanting. So, let's go ahead and kick it off with a little NBA playoff talk. On Sunday, we saw the dismantling of the Cavaliers uh, by the Boston Celtics. And, and really, truthfully, it was more... Yes, the Celtics play a part, and let me just say Brad Stevens is is slowly taking over. He may have already done it just because of what's going on in San Antonio these days, but he's coming close to being the best coach in the game right now. Um, But yeah, so they had a little bit to do with it, but the, the Cleveland Cavaliers really hurt themselves. They shot poorly. They had a bunch of turnovers. Uh, it's just a rough game for them all around. And... um. I know you saw it, so what are your takes on the game? Well, first I would just like to say, when, when Brian said, I'm speaking for Brian now, and, and this is a faux pas that you shouldn't do, but I'm speaking for Brian right now. When Brian says that the guy's the best coach in the game right now, he literally means at this moment, this space and time. Because people will be like, well, what do you mean? He's never won this. He's right. playoff look bad. He... Right now, in this space and time, he is coaching his team yes. better than anybody else yes. in the league, considering he has no stars. And he's pretty much got an upgraded bump the team. <laughs> and he has gotten them to buy in to playing defense and being unselfish. And it's working. Right. If Cleveland don't come out here and play with some more intensity, I don't care that they have LeBron. LeBron cannot score 100 and something points. They had 38 points or something at the, was it the half or the, yeah, I think it was halftime. They only had like 38 points. Mm -hmm. I don't care who, who, they can put LeBron and Kobe on there. They ain't going to help. I'm talking about old broke down Kobe. Uh (laughs) (laughs) So, they just need to play it more intensely. I don't care. I don't want LeBron to go. Obviously, being a Laker fan, I don't want the Celtics to get any closer to winning another championship. <laughs> but LeBron, he can't win it by himself. And yes, people be like, oh, they just shot bad. They won't shoot like that again. Even if they didn't miss as many shots, they were down 30 at points in the game. It wasn't like this game was ever close. They went on that 17-0 run and never looked back. Right, it was pretty much over from the beginning. I mean, they never really recovered. Uh, so, yeah, tonight's going to be game two. Hopefully, it gives people something to watch because I know a lot of people were switching to go see if Tiger was going to make his... Uh, Have a seat. Hey, All y'all people that thought that, just hey, sit down somewhere. Hey, I will say this. The boy, the boy when, he, when he got in, he moved up to second and he was on that big run. He had two really good days of golf. Regardless of the fact that he swung it and knocked it in the water on 17 on Sunday, and that pretty much put him out of contention. Uh, yeah, he had he had two really good days of golf, and that's just me giving my two cents. And I know absolutely very very minimal amount about golf, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah. So, but getting back on topic. Uh, yeah, LeBron. He's going, you know, game two, he'll be out there. He'll probably get him another triple double and he'll, he'll be back he'll to his. Supporting. Right. And, and, mm-hmm. and Corver and Love and, and, and J.R. Smith and those boys, they'll, they'll shoot better. And, you know, they'll, they'll but probably. But the thing is, they did get, well, I think that the thing was like they had 12 open shots or something. Mm-hmm. There was one. They had open looks. They just didn't You're drop. not going to hit. You, people aren't hitting fifty percent from three, tipping. No. So let's say you hit two or three more of those shots. You was down thirty. <laughs> right. Like if they can't keep, Boston was getting to the basket at will, and that's been one of their problems all year. They don't have a rim protector. I mean, Boston was just going to the rack. Like they don't have anybody to block our shot. Either we're gonna get fouled, we're gonna make a layup, or we're gonna miss and get a tip in, or we're gonna get a good shot in the paint. Yeah. And then when, when they collapse, we're going to kick out and, and either shoot a three or, you know, a little shot fake or whatever. And that's when you, when you, when I was watching them, I was like, he's just coaching a better college team. Yeah. I, I will say this a couple of years from now, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are going to be MVP consideration. Nice. They, they, they really are. They, they have some really young pieces and, and just very nice. Uh, so let me up. tell you what they probably going to be. At some point, you're not going to be able to afford to keep all of them because they're about to get another. You got Kyrie. He's about to be one year in. He got one more year before his contract, and he's going to need a Supermax. Uh-huh. You got Brown. He in his second year, so what? don't they get three or four years? I think the rookie contract is four now. But I'm. Yeah, but I they get the three it. years, and the four year is like a. It's like a player, uh, no, no, a, a team for, option. A, a, team a restricted player. agent or something. Yeah. So he going to get a big check. Then two years later, it's going to be time for the other guy, the, the light-skinned, tall, linky guy from Duke. What's his name? Jason Tatum. Mm-hmm. Tatum going to want a big check. And then you then, never know. Uh, well, how long is the white guy? I'm, I'm sorry I can't remember his name. What's the white guy that broke Gordon, his ankle? Gordon that? Haywood. Yeah, I was just going to say, you never know if he's going to be. And if he comes back and plays like he used to, I mean, yeah, that's he's, he's another he one. gonna need his money. Y'all ain't got that much money. Now you got Clay Thompson over here in the Warriors. As we can transition to them, mm-hmm. um, he went. They negotiating, and he probably gonna take less money. But some of these people can't afford to take less money. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we're gonna really find out what kind of uh, executive Danny Ainge is. Then we're gonna see. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see what he can swing. But yeah. they got to get another first round pick, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-mm. So, but yeah, like you said, let's transition on to the game that happened last night. And is you know, I know LeBron had a, a rough game Sunday, but I'm that aside. Even if he comes out and plays like his normal self tonight, I'm not so sure that he's not been overtaken as the best player in the league right now. Kevin Durant. Just this year, this playoffs, I just I've watched a bunch of the Golden State Warrior games just by happenstance because I know most of them are late in the evening. Um, he is playing like he's got some kind of cheat code in NBA 2K. That's hilarious. I mean, he's just that kind of craziness <laughs> right now. He, I mean, just that's the way that's the way it feels. You know, you know, <coughs> cheat code. Your word. Go ahead. <laughs> But yeah, I be let's see, he shot fourteen and twenty seven last night, and just I mean, it seemed like it was even more, it was even better than that. It's almost like he was just hitting everything he shot, thirty seven points, and you can tell that the Rockets have decided to let him be him and try to stop everyone else, which is I mean at least they have I, I will give it to them they have a defensive philosophy and it worked for a while last night, but um yeah. Uh, He's just on another level, and I don't know that anybody on Houston can stop him. They don't have anybody that can stop him. They don't have anybody with the length to do anything. He's going to get a shot off just like he was doing in that last series. And then if you get too crazy, you uh, cap, uh, oh boy, that I call fool's goal, he had 28. Oh, Clay and Thompson. Then, <laughs> and then you don't know when uh, Curry might blow up. 4.30 or 40, 
You know you're going to get your consistent effort out of green. They don't have enough power to... They might win one game in this series. Yeah. So it's... Yeah, yeah nothing really else I can say about that. <laughs> um, yeah, Chris Paul played as about as well as he was going to play. James Harden, you know, he's going to have a game where he gets 35, 40. And yeah, he had 40 of that. But pretty much it, him and KD going to negate each other, so it's going to come down to the other pieces. Right. And they just don't have enough pieces. I think if this series was maybe a year or two ago, Trevor Ariza would be more of a factor on defense. Right. But he's just older now. He just, yeah, he's not the defensive stopper he once was. He's pretty much like Iguodala. Right. He's in that role. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's really all I have for the NBA playoffs. So if, if, We're good. Let's uh, go and get to let's, the let's move on to <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the chanting and the ranting. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to go first. And I'm going to set the scene here. We are at Walmart. Lay the table out. Go ahead. Yes, we are at Walmart. And um, and this is really for the uh, the elderly. I know, judging by our viewer demographic, we don't have very many of those that watch this show. Uh, and that's fine. But, you know, the, the younger folks that do watch, they can, uh, they can relay the message for us. Okay, okay. So... I'm at Walmart. I'm headed toward the pharmacy. Now, mind you, I had to make a stop in between the pharmacy, uh, in between the, the front door and the pharmacy, just pick up another little item, which was on the way. And I, I get, I, I encounter this elderly couple who are walking in, and, and you know, they elderly people take their time. Unfortunately, they, I guess, they just trying to save whatever time they have left on Earth. Um, and not only are they taking their time, they they are arguing with each other. <laughs> for I don't know what, but they, they were just know. going back and forth. So I found it hilarious and and you know somewhat adorable. So <laughs> as I'm as I'm walking, I, I I managed to pass them up and uh, go ahead and get my other item and get to the pharmacy, which is where they obviously were headed as well. And I wound up beating them there. Um, just by, you know, maybe about a 30-second window, get to the little line where you're supposed to get while you wait, because somebody was already up, you know, working the counter. Mm -hmm. So I'm up in the line where you have to wait and uh, where I'm supposed to be. And the elderly couple see me standing in the line. They get over by the window like they're just going to be next in line after this other lady that's being helped. So I see this happening, and the woman behind the counter, the pharmacist uh, assistant, she says, uh, ma'am, are you here for a prescription pickup? And she went, well, yeah, that's why I'm standing here. And at this point, I'm laughing. <laughs> and she said, the woman behind uh, the uh, pharmacist assistant said, okay, well, if you don't mind getting, getting in line behind that, man, we only had one counter working this morning. Our computers are giving us trouble, uh, so we only have this. We're doing everything off mine. Uh, so if you don't mind getting in line behind that the gentleman there, pointing at me, and they they start. Well, well, no, we we were here. We were here first, and I went to myself. Well, yeah, technically, y'all were on Earth first, but uh, here this here this here this fine morning. No, no, no. I was <laughs> where I was supposed to be. You know, so. It, <laughs> <laughs> As we go on, the, the lady who is being helped finally moves on about her business. And I go to step up. They step up in front of me. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I said, oh, excuse me. And I just was like, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm here to pick up a prescription. And I'm talking to the pharmacy assistant, completely ignoring the two elderly women, elderly people who are trying to take over. Uh, and, I mean, they, they literally get belligerent with the pharmacy assistant. Now, mind you, I'm enjoying that because every time I go to my hometown pharmacy in Walmart, it's always an adventure. But it's the only one in town, so it's the closest one. And, you know, you just kind of deal with what you got uh, because you don't really want to go off to go to another pharmacy. And so, mind you, I'm enjoying the fact that they're giving the pharmacy, uh, the pharmacy assistants, all kind of grief. 
<laughs> but she is literally, I mean, the, the older woman was getting belligerent and going after it. And I'm just like, okay, well, as long as she don't turn this on me. And then they turn it on me. <laughs> and they start going after me. And I said, okay, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry. I was, I know we, I, I, honestly, I understand y'all came in the door first, but I mean, I, I go to where you're supposed to go, and I was here before y'all, you know, a good half a minute before y'all, and I can't believe I'm standing here trying to explain, like, I'm literally explaining myself to two people. Bro, you yeah. should have just let them go, Brian. I, I was like, oh. You saw that trouble brewing. You saw it. Well, oh, that's when I finally stopped myself. I said, like, I said, just go I said man, my, my problem is, <laughs> y'all, your problem is not with me. I, your problem is with the system, and that's. Listen, they only have one counter open right now, so you know they, they probably you know deserve a little bit of our patience and and time. And, and I try then I try to you know to to reason with them. That didn't go over well. So finally, the woman just gave me my prescription, and I was on my way. And I could still hear that not a man done joined in. <laughs> he done he done got over being mad at his wife, so now he's done joined in and arguing. And I could hear them going as I'm walking out. But that's my rant and chain. Old people, y'all need some patience. I'm sorry. Y all, y all, they're not going to get patience. Y all, right. y all, listen, just because y'all were here on Earth first does not entitle you to be able to rule break. So. And they didn't know that they had two counters. What, what the, did the other counter say? It was closed or something? It did not. It just wasn't anyone there. The, one, the woman was just basically telling everyone as they came that it was just one counter. Okay. They need to put a sign in front of the counter saying, go to other counter. I agree. <laughs> anyway. So go so, ahead. <laughs> so you at Walmart. I'm at TJ Maxx. This is my first one. <laughs> and walking TJ Maxx with my mother. The kids sneeze. I glance down. I ain't cover their mouth now. I'm just like, cover your mouth. Okay, cover pause, me. pause. Now let me, let me set the scene. Let me set this up for people. T, okay. T, I've known T for over um, about, what, almost 15 years now. Right. And I know T, so I know this is just her way, and nothing wrong with it. She just, she's always been, you know, the type, if you sneeze and you don't cover your mouth, she gonna tell you, you know, cover your mouth. She not, like, necessarily just, you know, being forceful to you, telling you, you know, she just letting you know that you need to cover your mouth. You know, it's, it's, it's unsanitary, and, and that's just her way. But go ahead. So, I say it, and I walk on. I ain't say it directly to it, but right. I just speak it out in the air. Right. And so, go looking for baby clothes for a baby shower. Looking, looking, looking. Same little kid, and this time I can see who the parent is, and it's two ladies, but one is obviously the parent because... She's talking to the other lady, um, saying, oh, the grandmama sends her this much money every month or whatever, whatever. And I'm like, what in the world? Like, are you bragging or whatever? Okay, that's fine. And I'm just, I mean, they talking so loud, I ain't even got an ear hustle. Like, they just speaking so loud. Then the other lady like, well, how much she sent? And she was like, how much she have? She was like, $50. I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you act like she had a couple of hundred bucks in the bank, like waiting. At any rate, so I'm still looking for something for this little person. Kid sneeze again. Ain't covered her mouth. I was like, cover your mouth. Then so the mom was like, excuse you? So I turned and looked at her and I said, I said, cover your mouth. Like she just sneezed and then cover her mouth. You don't teach my child. I teach my child. Duck, duck, quick, quick. My mama turned around because she just looking for something on a different rack. And she like, she said cover her mouth. She, and then she like, you shut up. Da, 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 da. Then she started cursing and calling us bees. Mm -hmm. And I was, so my mom was turned and I was like, uh-uh, mama. I'm not, I'm done with it. Like I'm finished. Like I'm not even paying her any attention anymore. I'm over it. And mm -hmm. so, then she kept, you be this and that. And so my mom's like, yo mama, let's uh, go T. <laughs> I can hear so, your mama. I can hear her saying that. She's like, yo mama. And then we left. So I get outside and I was like, now, who in their right mind says, you don't teach my child manners? Like, that's pretty much what she said. You don't teach my child manners. 
Because I'm not doing it. That means I don't care if she spit everywhere and don't know to cover her mouth and that that's appropriate. Because the kid wasn't like a baby, like right. a toddler. She was at least three or a big two-year-old. Uh-huh. She should know to cover her mouth. So that was, like, I, that lady went from zero to 60. Even, like, if, even if she had got caught off guard by it, I still feel like, okay, she initially says, you know, you don't teach my child. That's my job, whatever. And then I say, you know, you take a breath and you just move on. You go to your rack right. and you keep your shopping. She continued and continued. She and, kept going. She, and was, she felt some type of way. I was like, lady, I, you know, I've dealt with children, like, and you just tell them to cover their mouth. Like, she spit germs in the air. Like, I have a right not to breathe in her germs because she didn't cover her mouth. Right. So, at any rate, I had just uh, moved on from that. And I called my sibling. And they was like, oh, I wish I had been out with Custer out. But mm. I was like, I had I didn't think nothing about it. I was like, you can call bees all you want. I know I'm not a female dog. Like, I'm not offended. You, like... Clearly, you're teaching your daughter how to curse and, and nothing else. Uh, yeah. But so that happened. Um, then being black happened. <laughs> so first, you can't go to an Airbnb because you might get the police called on you for taking your luggage out of the Airbnb and getting ready to leave. And they call the police. And say, uh, somebody's stealing out of this condo or whatever they were in. Mm. Okay, police gonna show up. I get that. Do we take seven police deep, a helicopter? <laughs> like, this is a bunch of resources. To, it, did you ask any questions of the person when they called you? Like, what's going on? Beside, what makes you think they're stealing? Like, Oh, okay, they black. Well, we got to come out here and we got to send a bunch of people and cops coming from every direction, Brian. This is broad daylight. I mean, it couldn't have been no more daylight. And then they start questioning the person. They explain the situation. They think the person is lying. Who's stealing luggage? Well, they put everything in the luggage and they walk out there with no TV, no nothing. Yeah. Deductive reasoning, people. So then, we got Yale. Come on, step right up. Mm-hmm. No, no, we're gonna go. We're gonna go back. University of Florida sit back. <sighs> they grabbing kids off the stage because they want to dance aggressively. Now, just tell them, look, I need y'all to go ahead and hustle on off the club stage. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Don't go grabbing on somebody's kid because you want to move them off the stage. You really slow the process down by doing that. Because then the next person got to pause. And the person that's reading the name is going to pause until you finish moving that person. Just tell keep moving, keep it moving. They do their little dance. They don't pay $40,000, $50,000 to go to your school. Uh, probably a year, depending on what they were doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just feel like he could have just, you know, if even if he wanted to just step up there, just step up there, just, you know, motion. Hey, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Keep yeah. moving, come on. We ain't got time for all that. Whatever yeah. you need to say. Yeah. So, University of Florida, way to go. Um, then we got Yale. Lord have mercy. Mm. Uh, I saw this video. Lord. She okay. trying to study, fall asleep. One of her white classmates, the person is black, calls, so you don't belong. She don't belong here. Yeah, wait. Well, it, how it, it turns the lights on. Turns the lights on and sees her sleeping. And uh, wakes her up to tell her, you know, you're not supposed to sleep in here. <laughs> okay. I but kept... <laughs> then she started saying, at some point she said she didn't go there because she called the police and was like she wasn't supposed to be there. Then the police come. This is the random chatting part. They going to come. Did y'all ask any questions? How did the, like, where is it? Well, if they're in the building, ma'am. You know, they probably used their key card. They didn't just sneak in there to go in there and fall asleep with a computer and some books. Right. <laughs> but did y'all ask any questions? No. You could tell from her voice probably because, I mean, there are black people that sound that could sound white. However, she shows up because I'm sure they ask, well, what color are they? Because they always want to get some kind of information on who they're looking for when they get to the scene. Yeah, need a description. Black, yeah. Black woman. Mm-hmm. Okay. We didn't send just two officers. Four officers show up. 
What did y'all think the black person was going to do? Turn into Black Panther and, and act up? Like what? I, and not Black Panther. What, what's Black Panther's little bodyguards? <laughs> uh, Okoye. Okoye. I guess they thought she was one of the Okoye um, tribe. I, I don't know. I, I don't understand why so many police officers came. You come, you see the girl supposed to be there. And be like, ma'am, don't call us with this foolishness again. And she don't call before on the black young man that came to see that same resident. Yeah. And they reported her and nothing happened. Yeah, and he, he just happened to be in the stairwell. And he, he said he had saw her on the elevator, though, before they got to the stairwell. Because oh. I watched his interview with uh, on CNN or something. He said at first he had got on the elevator with her. She was acting fine. But then all of a sudden she started acting like she was scared and all this and other. And she was, he was like, the only way you can move and go up and down the elevator is to swipe your identification, your ID card. So she know he belonged there. She's just that person. Um, now we got out here in Oakland. You can't barbecue while being black because some white lady decides she want to be the barbecue police. <laughs> <laughs> and tell this man and he can't barbecue right there and she trying to say oh you was using coal and you can't use coal right there what I, there's a, and there's a meme I'm going to send it to you when I when I get a copy of it there's Please, a meme the of her with, 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 with President Obama no it's, if somebody it, sent me one with that lady they have, they have <laughs> photoshopped her into the scene uh, in coming mm -hmm. to America, when oh, Eddie no. Murphy and uh and Arsenio Hall, it, it looks like they're staring right at her, and they had this look on their face like uh, it's hilarious. And she's on the phone. Yeah, you gotta send me though, because this meme somebody sent me has her in in front of the White House. President Obama is walking out in a tan suit, oh, and God. you can see Michelle in front of him, and then it's got at the bottom. That's right. I said a tan suit, like in course, so like she talking on the phone. And I was like, I cannot. This is like, lady, mind your business. And the man said the, the the fire department had driven by a couple of times and they said nothing to him. He had waved to him at one point. He said he lived there 40 some years. He know where he can and cannot barbecue. She just was that person. Um, yeah. White people, and it, and I ain't talking to, in generals. You know who you are, cause you're offended by black people, or you don't want us to be in some space. Stop calling the police. The police are not your private security. Mind your own business. Don't be calling the police because two Native American kids are at some tour in Colorado State, and you feel like they shouldn't be there. Because they didn't answer the questions. Let me let me let me, let me show. You. Two teams um, just entered a recreation center on a tour there, Dream University. When the parent in a group steps away and calls nine one one, their behavior is just really odd. She said when the Colorado State University campus, uh -huh. they won't give their names. They just um, really stand out. <laughs> Keep going on your tour. What you think they're going to do? Because last I checked, people that uh, that pull out guns and, and mass murder, what color have they been burned? Uh, if they haven't been tan, they've been uh, very, very pale. Well, white males. Mm -hmm. Typically young white males. Besides the dude at Las Vegas, it's, typically it's a young white male that does that. Leave these Native American young men alone. And mind your business and see what else they got to tell you about this recreation center and this tour and what classes they offer. They just stand out. I, if I was them, I wouldn't go to that school. Because if she got that mindset, her kids got it and some more people that got it. Yeah. And then the police, speaking of them again, they get them. Guess what they decide to do? Campus police respond by pulling them from the tour and patting them down and asking them why they didn't cooperate when others asked them questions. Oh, gosh. Who asked, okay, let this, what I because I don't know this story. Who asked them questions? Was it like 
tour officials or was it just Ms. people? Miss knows it. Want to know? Okay. Well, who are well, then they don't have to. They don't have to answer any of her questions. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Nosey probably was asking questions and they didn't answer. So she said, I'm going to call the police. Right. Now, if it was tour officials, I mean, depending on the question, they, you know, they have every right to Let ask. Let me tell you, the tour guy is doing nothing but trying to get y'all through the tour in a timely manner because usually those are on rotation. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to get you and they don't want to come and wait and stall a long time. Because you see them around any campus, All right. they be in packs and they be moving in such a way where they don't want two groups in the same spot. Two guys probably in the front don't even know what's going on. Yeah. If we could go back real quick, just just for a touch on the Yale situation, like I uh -huh. we like you and I had discussed yesterday, I told you it what frustrated me, and it just goes back to things we've already talked about when it comes to you know police and their you know, just seemingly lack of training or just lack of uh, of understanding. Common uh, sense. But yeah. Yeah, common sense ain't common, but well, go ahead. The, I mean, the two officers, the, the lady and the, uh, the male, they're both white, they first um, show, up, show up at the scene. They mm -hmm. they never get around to explain. And because she's, you know, she's being very forceful at this point. She's upset. And, and I'm speaking of the, the, the black lady. Uh, she's upset at this point, and you know she's being very forceful, very, you know, just, uh, you know, somewhat unhelpful. And but there's reasons for it. She's upset, and she's, you know, she's just questioning different things. They never did actually say the words. They him hauled around it, but they never did actually say the road. You know, we're just doing, you know, our our job. We're just doing uh, our protocol. Now, when the African American police officer got there. He actually said the words, but at that point, the situation was to a point where she was rude to him as well, you know, just not wanting to hear it. It, it. I just feel like you just if you're up front in that kind of situation. Now, if the situation was completely escalated to something else, then, yeah, you don't have to truly explain anything. But at that point, when they when they were first there, if they would just say, you know what, we're, just, we're following protocol, this is what we're doing. It just explain everything instead of being so secretive and asking, you know, asking a question and then going 20 feet away, making a phone call or, you know, just be up front. Tell people, you know, you're there for the, this is our protocol. This is what we're going to do. And, you know, just be up front with the lady, be up front with, you know, with everyone involved. And I feel like that situation would not have been what it was. Well, I'll say this. One, I don't think she was being rude. From what I heard, she was Said. And she was like, now I, you I say know. rude. I think just being just she upset. Didn't, like, she was just upset. Out. She was just like, now you are harassing me because this white person called and said right. I don't belong here. Yeah. Now I can open my door to my apartment. Like at that point, she just upset. And mm -hmm. like you said, if you come up there and say, "Ma'am, we have to respond to every call, right. whether it's frivolous or not," can you just identify yourself so we can move on and we'll deal with her later? All right. Or go over there and be like, one of y'all disperse and say, look, do you belong here? Why are you calling us? Who Are you the person that made the call? Where's your ID? Right. They should have taken everybody hers. everybody got to show some ID Correct. and show that you're supposed to be here. Because for all I know, you're visiting. Correct. And, you, and, and, and the person that you're visiting actually know and has seen her, and it's not a problem. But you don't know her, and, and you live in Podunk, Mississippi. And they never seen no black people. Now you all up in arms or whatever your problem is. Mm -hmm. Do like the movies do. Midnight Mississippi. You like the Midnight movies. Midnight Mississippi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus. Is it a Midnight Mississippi? It is not. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they love to do that in the movies. Oh, okay. Midnight Mississippi. So, but you know, the officers don't feel like they should answer any questions. Most right. of the videos that you see, when a person like, what did, what did I do? What? They just keep roughhousing or do whatever that they're trying to do. If they're trying to get the cuffs on you, they don't say, well, you were resisting or you whatever. They just do whatever. Mm -hmm. I.e., they don't choke some kid out, another reason to vent, and kill some man. Now, I think he had done something, but you don't get to decide that he gets to die for whatever he did. And I can't remember uh, the, the guy's name, but I just saw that. Mm -hmm. Somebody's protesting. 
because they don't choke the man in the autopsy show that he died from asphyxiation and was strangled, which the police officers are not supposed to be putting people in chokeholds, but, you know, they know that there's no consequence for their actions, so they're going to do what they want to do. Yeah, I just, yeah. Training. You cannot, I cannot stress training enough. But so on some level, is it training, Brian? Because we don't, either white people are not recording it when it happens and putting it on to say, okay, it's happening to us too, or brown people are not, or yellow people. You see this happen typically black males. Mm -hmm. And every now and then you see a black female, like the 65 year old grandmother that y'all snatched out of a car because she wouldn't sign a speeding ticket. Guess what? All of her information, if she gave you her ID, it's on, on, you had to write that down. Mm -hmm. You wrote her her uh, driver's license number down. You wrote her name on it. Give her the ticket. And if she don't sign it, and she failed to appear, then she going to have a warrant like anybody else. Do we have to go to grabbing this woman out of the car? Because she wouldn't sign that ticket. Yeah, I don't know that it's not, uh, you know, like whites and, and brown, you know, different ethnicities out there filming. Because I've, I've seen you know, videos of, of the like, you know, different situations, but they're not getting the, the, the mainstream because I feel like where our society is now, anything that happens to a black person, they're going well, to... Well, I want you to send me something of the white I, person. Yeah, I don't I, think one white guy gets shot on TV. I mean, on on, on the... And none of these stories I'm telling you I've seen on mainstream. Now, that Yale thing happened, that's because that's Yale. Mm. Otherwise, like the little, the young lady that was poisoned Earlier, um, in like in last semester, that her roommate, who happened to have been a white person, she was black. That girl was putting fecal matter on that girl's toothbrush, sticking it up her butt, all kinds of stuff. The girl kept getting sick and sick and sick. Then they come to find out that's what she had been doing, trying to get rid of her roommate. And they found out because the girl posted on her social media that she had did it. And I don't know that that got national media. No, and I don't. It's so like, not here because I go on these different YouTube channels and listen to people. And I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm not trying to make light of the situations that are happening to African Americans. I'm. I'm just saying, the media will, will latch on to those stories more often than not, and, and put those out there and make those, you know, this big ridiculous thing just like well, they Fox News. If it was happening, Fox News would definitely grab it and be like, "See, it's not only black people." The police do this to everybody. Well, black people are calling on white people. I have no doubt that they would find those stories. Just like the media gave us the precedent that we have today. Um, right, because all they did was talk about him all the time. He didn't even have to do much uh, publicity because he was always the talk of every station. Yes. And, and any station can, can, can say ABC, NBC, CBS, all of y'all, all y'all did was cover him and the asinine stuff that he might have said. And why y'all thought he did whatever. And he didn't even have to do much work. Uh, do you have any more ranting and chatting? Yes, I'm finna rant and chat. Uh, I'm mad about uh, uh, the Avengers and how it ended. Oh, good. We can just move right on in to, uh, uh, yes, that's our next topic. So, the Avengers, the Infinity War. Um. Go ahead. You, 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 you're on a roll, so just go. You, you go ahead, and I'll, I'll chime in. <laughs> if you haven't, if you hadn't watched all, I guess they assume that you watch all of them. Like, so say you didn't like, um, what's the one where the, where they in space with uh Zoe Saldana is the blue person? The Garden um, Gardens of the Galaxy. You, so say you didn't like Gardens of the Galaxy. The only reason I watched that is because Larry, shout out Larry, was like, yeah, go ahead and watch it because mm -hmm. it's got some pieces to go with the Avengers because I almost didn't watch the second. Right. Because um, the first one was okay, but I wouldn't, it didn't get my attention enough for me to want to see the second. So I watched that. But if I hadn't, I wouldn't have known some of the pieces that was happening in this Avenger that were important. Um I feel like I haven't seen Spider-Man, but I feel like some stuff might have happened in Spider-Man that drew um, Peter Parker close to Iron Man. Um, he's kind of like a, a, a he's kind of like a father figure to him. That's so. Yeah. So I guess 
So, yeah, so I felt like, okay, I was able to deduce that just from my deductive reasoning skills. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that, you probably needed to see that. Um, then, if you didn't see Black Panther, which I don't know who you are at this point, if you have seen Black Panther, um, it's just so many pieces. And I was wondering how they would weave it together. I think they did a good job of showing us, okay, we got this part that's going on in the Garden of the Galaxy or Universe or Everse or whatever verse. And then we got this part happening in Wakanda. Right. And we got this part happening on Earth or whatever with uh, Doctor Strange, them and their little space and time continuum, whatever they be doing. And so I think that was smooth with the transitions and try to tell the story and get some more background on Thanos. And Thanos, and my brother brought this to my attention because I hadn't really paid, but Thanos, I thought you would just think Thanos is evil because typically these characters are just evil and want to be take over the world. However, on some level, you can empathize with him because he was doing it he was on the wrong side of right. He was doing what he thought was right, which right. is he it. was on the wrong side of right. right. And <laughs> but what, what, which seems to be like a thing with bad guy because Killmonger, Killmonger and Black Panther was right. doing what he thought was the right on thing. The wrong side of right. Yeah, seems to be a thing with the bad guy, the quote unquote bad guys in well, these Marvels. You know, Loki just wanted to take over, but uh, yeah, most like yeah. these last couple of villains and these last two, you're right. They have been on the wrong side of right and. He wasn't just like, oh, I want to take over. Oh, I want to destroy the Earth. Right. Like, when when the Earth is overpopulated, people uh, go hungry. And that's not necessarily when we can just get rid of half the population. Right. <laughs> Which is the problem. Like, okay, bro, get out of these powers. How about let's do something with global warming and make it possible for more people to eat and not just kill them off so they don't need to eat. <laughs> that was like, yes. okay, can we not sign this a different way than just killing half of the population? In his mind, no. <laughs> right. So, I'm, go ahead and get your points, and then i tell what I'm interested to see next. Okay. Uh, I mean, let's see. Uh, I guess I really don't have that much to add. At this point, I'm sure anyone who's listening who even cares about the Avengers <laughs> has already seen the movie, so you know what happened. Uh, I just, you know, kind of want to give a, a few, and I'll let you go as well, but I just kind of, in my mind, just where, where are they going to go from here? Now, I think, just like we discussed yesterday, I think, you know, there's going to be something with the time stone that uh, Dr. Strange saw. That you know, in his one out of fourteen million, uh, <laughs> one out of fourteen million uh, different possibilities that that they actually won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the one I think he saw that you know that that, that somehow they're going to use time travel and maybe like the little barf uh thing that Iron Man Iron Man showed in Civil War where he was able to go back and see when his parents died and. And uh, he basically mm -hmm. was able to visualize all that moment. Uh, something to do with time travel that's going to bring all the characters who disintegrated back. Yeah, so many uh, people didn't make it. Because <laughs> Black Panther, you know, has a, a sequel coming down the line. Right, you gotta have another movie. Spider Man has a sequel coming. There's no way that those characters remain, you know, disintegrated. In limbo. All right. And then you can't have. Well, how are you going to have a movie without. Uh, Samuel L. Right. That ain't his character's name, but <laughs> Nick, uh, Nick Fury. Uh huh. Yeah, you gotta have Nick around. Yeah. He can't just be done. And this is where, I, and I don't know this to be a fact. This is just me thinking, just because of what I know as far as you know the movie deal that they have. I don't see Iron Man completely being killed off. I think maybe just going to retirement. What I can see. If there is one who, you know, possibly is killed off in the, in the next half of this Avengers, I can see Captain America being the one. Um, because I think there are comics where he is, you know, destroyed somewhere in, in space. So, somewhere out there, I think there are. So, and, and you know, his movie deals come. 
<laughs> but I could see Thor not being killed off because he's a god and he's gonna go back and he's gonna try and get his people back together and you know, you know, when his movie deal is up, obviously. Uh, but Captain America yeah, being just right cause of his sister. <laughs> and uh, but Captain America being the only true like mortal at one point in his life. Right. Uh, he could. I think if anything, he'll walk away. Like he'll just be like, "I'm done with this. I've been, I've been doing this all my life. Which he's been living for a long time. Yeah, he been out. He been out there for a minute. <laughs> and I'm just tired of it. Oh, and what else happened? Oh, hello. Yeah. So I think that's what happened with that. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think they're going to, when I say time travel, I think they're going to revisit back to the Battle of Little, Little Wakanda and re, revisit that, uh, have something to do with, you know, what happened there. Somehow they're going to revisit the fact that Thor actually does severely, you know, this is very, not, not necessarily really brought up too much, but Thor actually does wound Thanos when he gets him with that axe. He wounds him, and Thanos just kind of looks at him and says, you should have went for my head. <laughs> and then snaps his fingers, and that's that. But uh, I think Hulk is going to show back up, even though he's being a coward right now. Um, and also, as far as when I say sequels that are coming, there's another Guardians in the, in the works. And so that's why I believe, and I told you this yesterday, I believe that Gamora will show back up. Yeah, um, I don't think she did either. I think that, you know... Even though he tossed her over into the blackness. <laughs> right, and then it, even in that scene, Red Skull, who was the keeper of the, that stone, the soul stone, he says that, you know, it's a life for a life, you know, or a soul for a soul. So yeah. I think the way Gamora will come back into things is Nebula, her stepsister, will, you know, give herself up. And I think that's the way maybe that comes back. But, yeah. So that's where I'm at with it, just looking into the future. I was just like, okay, well, they don't want to have to pay these characters to be in another movie, so they just go kill them off until, <laughs> until after Captain. Apparently, Captain Marvel is who um, Nick Fury. What's his name? Nick mm -hmm. Fury text. Yeah, yeah no, that was that was that was, like, was, that was a beeper like, child. That was a beeper. I was like, what is he doing with that? But anyway, he's paged to nine one one. We need you, Captain Marvel. Come say the day. Yes. Um. So, and it's a girl, right? It is. Uh, Brie Larson is is set to play Captain Marvel, in in so, her upcoming backstory movie. So this will be their first female lead because DC got Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And they don't really have a female lead in any other Marvel movies. Am I missing one that I don't? No, uh, Black Widow is is rumored to have a movie coming out, her own personal mm -hmm. movie, but that you know she's not, she hasn't been a lead in any of the other ones. So, but the, Black Widow is like Captain America, pretty much, except she don't have any kind of superpowers. She's just a a super spy assassin, can fight, kick butt, deductive reasoning skills off the charts, whatever yes. <laughs> kind of person. Mm -hmm. Any rate, um, got Ant Man and them coming in the next one, right? Ant Man and the Wasp, yes. So they should have a little movie coming out soon. Uh, feel like somebody movie coming out June the fifteenth. Is that him? <sighs> anyway, just a, uh, a reminder that that um, Incredibles will be out June the third. <laughs> just a reminder for all who care. Yes. Not rushing June the 30th to get here because I won't enjoy my summer. However, that is on the table. Um, you said June the what? 30th. Mm-hmm. That's a big day. That's a that big day. That is a nice day. It's a yeah. beautiful day. Um, so, Captain, I mean, Avengers, I, as a whole, I don't think that I... I expected more on some level. I don't know why. I guess because Thanos wasn't as evil as I thought he was going to be or something. <laughs> yeah, he definitely, like you said, he was, he was more sympathetic than I assumed he would be. I mean, he even shed a tear because he really loved 
old girl before he tossed her over there to get that stone. Yeah, she said, are you crying? Right. <laughs> she thought he was crying because there's no way he could get the soul stone. Right. And then her boy was like, yeah, he's crying for you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Lord, he really cared for her. He said, those uh-huh. tears are not for him. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, we'll see what Miss Marvel can do. Uh, how's she gonna save the day? She allegedly is the strongest of all Avengers, so we we'll see how that work out. I know. Uh, she than, uh, that's why I don't don't huh. don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> I'm mad about that. I'm still know. mad about the Hulk not being able to pull him pull the not the Hulk. I'm mad at what's his name not being able to get the Hulk to come out. Yes, the Hulk told him no. He said no. Uh, I'm, I'm well, mad. His subconscious, so he really was telling himself no. <laughs> right. I'm mad that that nobody smartened Thor up, and, and he kept calling that boy Rabbit the whole movie. Rabbit. Uh, that the movie. <laughs> oh, that's something else I wanted to vent about. I don't know why y'all had to kill who. Oh. He just yeah, just grown back up. <laughs> he just got the teenage years group. <laughs> and now he got to go from ground zero. Oh, Groot. Come. Oh, Groot. I am Groot. Groot just, yeah, I am Groot. He just can't get, can't get a break. <laughs> but yeah, I'm thinking that uh, between Tony Stark's uh, technology and and I think uh, what's what's the sister from? Well, I can say the sister ain't Shuri. dead, even though Pet Black Panther did. Sure, Shuri, Shuri. I think she's gonna come with something. Um, yeah, I think I think you know when you, when you put all that. Combined together, and you know, as as we were mentioning, the the last two bad guys really seem to be, you know, in their mind thinking they were doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Technically, Killmonger did has gotten what he wanted because Wakanda is open to the rest of the world now. Right. So, well, I don't think uh, nobody's gonna be trying to feed feed the, uh, or figure out a way to to feed people. Because he don't win and kill half of them. They're just going to keep overpopulating. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Like, getting rid of them, that ain't going to change the problem. It's just going to happen again. It'll just be years gone down. Mm-hmm. Like, you, if you thought about it, you really didn't fix the problem but for a small space in time. Yeah. It, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with it. It's... And I still want to slap dude from the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, they almost had that glove off of him. Oh, Star-Lord, and yes. He started feeling some kind of way. I have a question. Speaking of that, that gauntlet, he, at the end of the movie, it was it, it looked destroyed when he snapped his fingers. Yeah. So something should be coming with that, because they really didn't make no big deal about that either. But, I mean, his hand, you could see it all burn up and smoking on his hand yeah. before he, you know, transports to the to the sunset. Right. Um, so there, I'm sure there will be something with that. Uh, so yeah. That be yeah, but Quill, he, he, he screwed up royally because they was getting ready to have that gauntlet. But you know what's going to happen. I know, but I'm saying they had it all, like, pretty much off his hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and here you come in your feelings. Well, she had told you to kill her anyway, and you had tried to. So why are we having this? Yes, and he <laughs> and he shot them bubbles out that gun. Yeah, said, oh. that was bad. I was like, yeah, y'all should have known. And then she had almost killed or uh, oh boy, uh, the Red Witch. And but then he remembered he could take time back. Mm-hmm. She had destroyed the stone that one of the stones he needed. Yes. Yeah. So, are they supposed to be doing a new Doctor Strange? There's nothing right now as confirmed that he's gonna have a a, a new one because I don't think the first one did very well. Uh, well, speaking of doing well, the this Avengers is the fastest to a billion in the box office, and I think right now it's at one point six billion. But, uh, yeah, fastest to a billion, even faster than uh, the Star Wars and a couple of others that were big-time movie theater. I don't know. I think we just got that build-up 
And they don't jump the gun because Star Wars still now, Star Wars, and it'll always be Star Wars. Well, this new one, they they <laughs> think it may have a chance to overtake it. I think it's uh oh goodness, it's what is the name of this new one coming out? See, I don't I don't really know Star Wars like that, so I I saw the preview um, for it. Um, Solo. Uh, okay. Yeah, Solo's coming out, and they're saying that that has a chance to. Overtake, but in the long run of things, uh, there's so many different. You know, Star Wars comes out once every couple of years. Marvel has two or three a year, so Marvel can always make him bank when it comes to box office because people are gonna go see it. I mean, and there's gonna be people that see it two, three times in 3D. So- and first of all, people, if you're paying money for 3D. And your theater is not truly equipped to handle 3D. You are wasting your money. Don't do it. And I will until I see that my theaters that I go to can handle the 3D situation. I just I see no point in it. <laughs> well, the one 3D movie I went to first of all, I wear glasses, so it was just hard for me to enjoy it with that thing on my face. Mm-hmm. But second of all, it didn't. I was like, "This away is ain't enough happen for me to even care." Like the stuff was jumping out in three D. I was like, "Didn't enough things jump out at me?" Right. But I'm looking at Captain Marvel, which is the legend of 2019. They got a troll out for it. Um, all these characters, unless it's a fake trailer, they showing. Nick Fury and all of them. Yeah, because it's supposed to be a younger Samuel L. Jackson. They're gonna do something to make him younger, because this it, the oh, backstory. This is a yeah. Right, it's, it's showing her backstory and how she came to be, and the reason why he had to page her because apparently she leaves Earth or whatever. And, this a prequel. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's gonna go up until you know him paging her. That's I think that's where it's gonna leave off. Okay, okay. But I was like, oh, are these people supposed to be... Disintegrate. <laughs> right, in the dust. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that, okay, that makes sense. So we can get to know who she is. Because don't know about... Man, except the movie head, don't know about know who she is. Right, and all the people that read the comics and all that good stuff. Right. But uh, that's all I got for today. You got anything else? Um, the win the next playoff game? The Cleveland and Boston tonight. Okay. Yes. Oh, they'll play every day. Mm-hmm. But like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's hilarious. And if it's a game seven Sunday for Cleveland. <laughs> so, you know, they'll be playing every day. Yes. One game a day. All right, people. Was, uh, as always, I'm one of your co hosts, Brian McKay, and I am with T. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, Davis. And I surely thought you was going to say T, cover your mouth, Davis. No. <laughs> no. And, and that, please, people, when you sneeze, and don't use your hand, because then you spit on your hand and you're touching stuff and other people got to use your sleeve. If you got a loose shirt on, just dry your hand and see your shirt. Yes, and before we go into another rant and chanting, uh, y'all have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for watching. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows, sports and world news, coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We're going to the top. We're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show.